Welcome to your channel, where we simplify neuroscience for you in just a few minutes. Have you wondered how neurons communicate with each other? Let's find out. A single neuron or nerve cell can do a lot. It can maintain a resting potential or voltage across the membrane, fire nerve impulses or action potentials to help us move and carry out metabolic processes required to stay alive. What's interesting is that our neurons don't touch each other, but wherever a neuron comes close to another one, a synapse is formed between the two, through which it communicates or transmits information. Synaptic transmission can either be chemical or electrical. In some instances, both can occur at the same synapse. Chemical transmission is more common, albeit more complex. A chemical synapse consists of three parts. Presynaptic endings contain neurotransmitters or chemical messengers. Synaptic clefts are the gap between the two neurons. And postsynaptic endings contain sites for receptors that receive the signals. The axon terminal of presynaptic neurons contains membrane-bound spheres called synaptic vesicles that are filled with neurotransmitter molecules. A neuron can be both presynaptic as well as postsynaptic. That is, it can send or receive neurotransmitters respectively. So it can be said that chemical synapses have the ability to communicate bidirectionally. When a nerve impulse or electrical signal triggers the release of neurotransmitters from the presynaptic endings, these chemicals are released into the synaptic cleft. The neurotransmitters then disperse across the synaptic cleft and bind themselves to specialized receptors of the postsynaptic neurons. Then, the neurotransmitters either excite or inhibit the postsynaptic neuron. Exciting the neuron results in the firing of an action potential of electrical impulses, whereas the latter prevents the transmission of a signal. To clear the synaptic cleft after this, the neurotransmitter molecules may simply drift away in a process known as diffusion. In some cases, they may be taken back up into the presynaptic neuron in a process called reuptake to be reused, recycled, or broken down. On the other hand, at electrical synapses, there is a direct physical connection between the presynaptic and postsynaptic neurons. This connection is a channel called the gap junction, which allows current, or rather ions, to directly flow from one cell to another. Gap junctions contain paired channels in the membranes of both presynaptic and postsynaptic neurons, thus forming pores. These pores are larger than the voltage-gated ion channels in chemical synapses, which allow several substances to diffuse between neurons. Electrical synaptic transmission is faster than chemical ones and happens almost instantaneously. However, the signal strength of electrical synapses diminishes over time, as opposed to chemical synapses that retain signal strength. Electrical synapses can only be excitatory and not inhibitory. We'll leave you with a fun fact. The more the synapses are used, the stronger they become and have a higher influence over postsynaptic neurons. The opposite also holds true. If you enjoyed the video, smash the thumbs up button, click on subscribe and hit the notification bell to catch our next episode.